Welcome back to Homebrew Audio for another tutorial on audio recording. This is lesson four in the beginner series for people who have absolutely no experience in audio. We're going to talk about creating audio for the internet today. In lessons one through three, you've already learned how to record a podcast intro with background music. And you did all that from the comfort of your own home with stuff you probably already had. In lesson four, we'll talk about audio file types. Kind of a boring topic, but something you really need to know about. But we're only going to talk about two of them, waves and MP3s. Then I'll show you how to create MP3s in Audacity. Remember, we're still working with a budget of zero dollars. I'm not using any expensive gear to record this. I'm using the same cheap microphone and music player headphones that you are. Okay, so file types. The first of the two audio file types we're going to talk about are waves. Waves are high resolution files. And if you don't know what that means, basically means large. Files have a .wav extension. They're also known as lossless files, which basically means the best quality. We'll get into more details about digital audio in future tutorials, but for now, this is all you need to know about waves. What we really want to talk about in lesson four is the revolutionary MP3. Hands up everyone who hasn't heard of MP3. I doubt I'd see any hands if I could see you. But just as a quick overview, the creation of the MP3 format enabled us to use audio on the internet. Before that, the files were just too large. It wasn't practical. The reason why we can use them on the internet is that they are one-tenth the size of a WAV file. For example, a 100 megabyte WAV file would be a 10 megabyte MP3. MP3s are considered a lossy format, which means technically it's a lower resolution, but really not so you'd notice. Again, we'll talk about the details later, but basically, honestly, most people can't tell the difference listening to an MP3 in a WAV file. I know all you audiophiles out there are probably jumping up and down and screaming at me right now. I said most people. We've been using a program called Audacity, and Audacity doesn't automatically deal with MP3s. So we need to help the program out a little bit. So here's how. We're going to be downloading an MP3 encoder. It sounds scarier than it is. So let's go to this website, click on this link, or type this into your web browser, and you should see a screen that looks something like this. You're going to want to go down to the Installation and Plugins section. Link number one, how do I download and install the lame MP3 encoder? If you have an internet connection, go there now and I'll meet you there. Okay, does your screen look like this? Did you make it okay? If so, scroll down, come to the how do I download and install the lame mp3 encoder that has nothing to do with how good or bad the program is, it's just an acronym. Click on that and if you have Windows you're gonna come to the uh, Windows download and if you have Mac you'll go to the Mac download. Let's go to the Windows download I'm going to download for Windows because I am a Windows user. Save this to a place you're going to remember. Since this is a zip file, you're going to want to unzip it. In this case, I'm going to choose Extract All and use the built-in Windows unzipper. And it puts it in my documents into a file called Library MP3 Lame. You're going to want to remember where this file is, the .dll file. Then we need to go to our desktop and open Audacity. Remember what the icon looks like, the headphones. We should be at the familiar by now Audacity screen. Come to File, come to Open, and you should have a file in here called My First Audio Production. It should be a WAV sound. Remember I said WAV files were the primary audio files. Double click it and open it. And there's the waveform representing the audio that you produced. Let's take a listen. Welcome to the first homebrew audio podcast. Okay, should sound pretty familiar. Now, remember what I said about wave files. A wave of any length at all is going to have a really large file size. So it's pretty impractical to use as internet audio. If we want this to be on the internet, like we would a podcast, what we're going to need is an MP3. A few minutes ago, we downloaded that lame MP3, and you should remember where that DLL file is. 
what we're going to do is create an mp3 file out of your project here. Go to File. Last time we chose Export as Wave. This time we're going to say Export as MP3. But since you haven't told Audacity how to do MP3s yet, you're going to get this the very first time you do it, and you only ever have to do this once. Call it My First Audio Production, and it'll be an MP3. Save. And it'll give you this message, which basically says, I, uh, I can't do MP3s. You have to show me where this file is. So if you remember where it is, all you have to do is click Yes and go up to my documents remember it was in here and we're looking for the DLL and these are called ID3 tags which are handy to have so you can put some information in there so iTunes and other programs can recognize what it is for our title let's just call it my first audio under artist and you just put your name you don't have to put anything under album or track number or anything. Under genre, you can see that there's all this music stuff. It's very music oriented. But for podcasts, it's mostly going to be talking. Let's just scroll down and click vocal. You can call this a podcast intro if you want. You can now double check that it was successful by going to file, open, go to the folder you saved it to, and you can see right here my first audio production and in this yellow box you can see some of the information that you put into the ID3 window If you right click on it and go to properties you'll see even more information the genre you put in as vocal description comments so all that stuff gets encoded into the file okay now that you've saved your audio as an mp3 Open your file management system, Windows Explorer in Windows, and take a look at the WAV version, the one you saved at the end of Lesson 3, and the MP3 version, the one you just saved. Notice the size of the MP3, 159 kilobytes. The size of the WAV file is 3.41 megabytes. 3.4 megabytes is more than 20 times larger than 159 kilobytes. Earlier in this tutorial, I mentioned that waves are usually 10 times larger than MP3s, which is why MP3s are better for the Internet. But that factor of 10 is actually on the small side. If you convert a CD quality music wave file to MP3, then yes, you usually get an MP3 that's one tenth the size. We'll talk about why in later tutorials. But a lot of audio, including most podcasts and other spoken word recordings, don't need to be at CD quality. So frequently, we end up with size differences similar to the ones we got in our example. We started out with a wave that was 3.4 megabytes and ended up with an MP3 that was 1.59 kilobytes. That's a big difference. The MP3 is about 1 20th the size of the wave. When we're talking about size differences, I usually find that a graphic of that difference makes it easier to understand. So take a look at this. In our example, the original wave was like the big blue box on the left, and the MP3 was like the little blue box on the right. That's quite a difference. So creating audio for the internet basically works like this. Record your audio as a wave to get the best possible quality to start with. Then convert it to an MP3. Then upload it to the internet in whatever way you usually do. And that's it for lesson four. Congratulations again. You've come one step closer to learning to produce professional quality audio. In this lesson, we talked about the difference between a WAV and an MP3, how to set Audacity up to work with MP3s, and how to save your audio for internet use. In the next lesson, I'll introduce the concept of recording's killer app, multi-track recording. I'll see you back at Homebrew Audio then.